This is exactly why I could never be a stripper. Let me forget my incredible makeup skills. But the only thing I could dance would be the Macarena. And that's not even good. Macarena. <laughs> Call me. So yeah, today I'm gonna talk about the menstrual cycle, ovulation and pheromones and boring words like those, but I found a fun study to do so. In 2007, three scientists who were trying to combine leisure time activities with work went into a strip bar. This is the best start for a joke, by the way. And studied how the menstrual cycle affects the tips the dancers got. And if this is not hashtag work day in the life of a scientist goals, I don't know what is. To explain this a bit further, the menstrual cycle of a woman is basically divided into three phases. It starts at the first day of our periods with uh, the so-called follicular phase, during which estrogen rises as an egg prepares to be released. It goes over to ovulation, where the estrogen peaks and the egg is released from the ovaries and could potentially be fertilized. And then over to the luteal phase, where the body prepares for a possible pregnancy. <laughs> Now, in the rest of the mammals, it is more often than not very visible to the opposite sex whether one is in a fertile stage or not, by coloration, swelling or whatnot. But in humans, it is basically almost impossible to tell by another person whether the woman is actually on her period or not. Now, there have been, of course, a few, and by a few I mean a lot more than a few, studies showing that this hidden estrus is not as hidden as we thought. Women near the most fertile point of their cycle have been shown to be more attractive to heterosexual males in body and facial attractiveness and even showed a higher creativity and verbal fluency. All of that attractiveness oozing out of one is probably caused by this hormone fluctuation that happens as I described a few minutes ago but of course it's not only estrogen doing the things but a bunch of others as well some of which me might not even know yet. And this attraction heterosexual males might feel is obviously rather subconscious since no one can go on the street and see a woman and say yes she is in her luteal phase. Also why would they say that this is the least interesting phase? But now they showed it even in an economic setting. Obviously, the strip club is the best way to do so because apparently and obviously, the more attracted a man is to a stripper, the more likely he also is to tip her or to buy extra lap dances or performances or whatnot. Now, in this study, 18 exotic dancers wrote down the tips they got over two months. And you will not believe this, you will actually believe it because I have been preparing you basically for the past half an hour here. But dancers made about $70 an hour during a peak fertility or during ovulation versus about $35 while menstruating and 50 in between. Girls who took birth control were at average uh, 37 and there was no performance peak. So not being on the pill and being in the fertile phase of your cycle gave significantly more tips. Now, what does the pill have to do with that? Well, the contraceptive produces hormonal cues indicating early pregnancy, which is not an enticing target for a would-be suitor, biologically speaking. Like, I'm not kidding here, but birth control could lead to so many thousands of dollars lost every year. Now, there are obviously a few little problems in this study. They only looked at 18 exotic dancers, only from this one club and only for two months, which is two cycles per dancer. Then they also had seven of these dancers on contraceptives. This is reducing the sample size even more since now, you know, you have only 11 participants who had a natural cycle to compare. And while this effect of ovulation, which was thought to be pretty much hidden, was shown even economically here, it should be further studied. This must have been a really fun study for the scientists conducting it. I mean, it for sure was for me reading it. And then it is the perfect example of how everything is somehow scientifically explainable or at least testable for a start. It is also saying a lot about the human biology and that is all I am about on this channel.
And next time I will be talking about what the size of a man's hand is actually saying about his uh, ding ding dong. Did I just really say that? Way to go, Marita. Now you established you're a scientist to be taken seriously. <laughs> Fuck.